Good morning. Okay, so this is my second attempt. I did it before and everything went wrong. And I um two things happened. One, my my phone stand thing wouldn't work. <laughs> and two, I reached Okay, so today is no makeup day. And um Pastor Kurt, your first rate. <clears throat> Pastor Kurt told me this morning, he said he liked the last podcast. He said, but I took, he said, I took um, five minutes apologizing for not wearing makeup. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm sorry you didn't like it. He's like, no, I liked it. I just don't know why you got to apologize for not wearing makeup. Um, because I don't know, I told him it's a girl thing. So there we go. It's on Vaseline. I'm not going to apologize for it today. Okay, I just, um, today I'm in my cozy car me. See, this is my cozy car me in my room. And these are long johns. I don't know if they're meant to be only worn under your clothes or what, but I'm wearing them over my clothes. Okay, well, okay, this is the only clothes, but <laughs> they're so comfy. And I'm taking a break today. So, um, if you guys will share this so people know I'm finally on, I'm 10 minutes late. I, I, I do not feel great today. My girls in my office will know what I'm talking about, but um, I let's just say the Panaway is not, it, it's, it didn't kick in yet. It's going to kick in. I know Panaway works. So, oh, you guys want to know what Panaway is before we have everybody come in? Um, this is Panaway. This is my Young Living Panaway oil. And um, I'm a firm believer in healing and I also am a firm believer in while I wait, if it's not spontaneous healing, put some of this stuff on it. <laughs> Young Living Panaway is this stuff. I'm telling you, yesterday, Fanny had like the worst crick in her neck and last week I had one. Thank you, monkey. Um, I feel good, you know, I, it's not that I feel totally bad. I, I don't feel um sick or anything. I just have a slight pain that I need to go away and it will go away pretty soon. Um. So today I'm going to do two fun things, okay? I'm going to talk to you um, for a minute, just chat for a minute about something um, that the Lord gave me. But then, remember I told you I was getting a box full of um, designer shoes for auction um, in the PG community? Well, it wasn't for auction. The person literally said to me, she said, I suppose you'll know what you want to do with it. And... So I'm going to have the box right here. I'm going to show it to you, okay? That's the box right there. It's not even open yet. It's just there. And then we're going to um, open it together. How about that? Shiki, what's hilarious? The Panaway? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Are you guys wearing makeup at the office today, Sheiks? After the Christmas Village, none of us want to wear makeup. None of us want to. Only like two of us. <laughs> okay. All right. So she said no makeup. Good. I'm proud of you guys. All right. So just two things. And um, we're going to spend some time together. I know I, I haven't made a real podcast. Like, you know, the whole video and stuff in a minute. And a well, monkey, you've not been so well. So of course you haven't worn makeup. You didn't go anywhere. And plus, you know, you don't need no makeup. You got the cutest little little face and you're so adorable. And um she says, Hurry up and come. I'm alone here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're alone there. Yesterday after work, um, while we wait for everybody to jump in, I um I ended up staying till late again, trying to fill out the orders and stuff like that. But yeah, it's so funny. I, I forbid anybody to tell me I look tired. Don't do it. You know, when people say, well, you look so tired and you're not tired, you know how, like, confusing that is? You're like, I look bad. I got to go in the mirror and watch right now. Because, um, you know, I... I and, and Ruthie really, she spearheaded the whole village. She did a fantastic job of taking over that stuff for me. And and um, I worked, but not nearly as much as she worked. And so, or as much as I usually work this time of the year. This is the busiest time of the year for us. And, and this year, I really didn't. I took it easy. I stayed in my office a lot. I worked from there. And, and so it's been pretty chill for me. And... Um, 
So I'm not very tired. In fact, I'm, and today I just chose to just chill, just um, take it easy and not really do anything important. Maybe just read my Bible, study a few sermons, back it up a little, you know. So um, you have your coffee. Girls, do you have your coffee? Get your coffee. Somebody's ringing my doorbell, like right now. I'm not even kidding, I just heard it. Shiki, you're welcome to come here and chill by me. I'm not even, I'm not even kidding. Hey. So I was thinking, the girls in, in um, who are not here in America, uh, in New York won't like it, but I was thinking we could do like a girls night. And so you guys could all see my room and stuff. It would be so cool. Anyway, tea, Donna, tea, you're wasting your time on liquids. Okay. So we'll unbox the shoes together in a minute. And, um, and then we'll just chat for a while, okay? Camille said, I had my coffee. Cheryl said, no, my creamer finish. Hmm. We had so much creamer at the church. June, can I come too? You better. Marcia said, I have my coffee. Rachel said, I will miss out. When I come to Trinidad, we'll do one there too. You know, we do all the time anyway, so we'll do one there too, okay? Kadisha, yes, the girl's like, okay, we'll do it, we'll do it, okay? Um, <clears throat> So let's pray. And there's three short things I want to talk to you about. Uh, if you're here for the first time, my name is Pastor Sharo. This is our weekly vlog, video blog, podcast, whatever it is that we, we are supposed to have these also on um, iTunes. I think they're updated. I'm not sure. I have to go check it out. This season has been kind of a busy one for us, but we're going to make sure everything is updated and Preacher Girl gets back in. I want to pray and then we'll jump in. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity to be together and to be with you, Abba. Father, I thank you because you never leave us nor forsake us. I thank you that all our days are in your hands, oh God, and that we can always count on you to to be there. Father, I pray, Lord, that whatever we say and do today, whatever we are about to to talk about, Father, is exactly what you meant for us to know today. I pray, oh God, that it is not only inspirational, but it is a blessing and that it is, it, it hits them in the places where you need to speak to them today. In Jesus' name, amen. So, um, amen. I hope you prayed already and I hope because it's almost lunchtime. So I know that most of you have already had your morning devotions done. Hey, if you didn't, um, if you didn't get one of your journals and stuff, these, um, they, they're so good. This is the one I have. Shania and I have this one. But I, I think we sold most of them out. And um, the journal, you could get it. If you want to buy this one, you can get it on Amazon right now for $19. They're available or one just like it. But in the Preacher Girl store, you could get the journal. the preach, uh, You could get the devotional, the Preacher Girl journal, and your Bible markers all in a set for, for 20 So your pick. Um, I love mine too, Shania. All right. So, so this is, um, a few things that I was thinking about this morning while I was talking to the Lord that might inspire you. I would love to hear your feedback on it this time because, because it's a little bit slower. Christine said, I'll be receiving mine soon. And dear said, I ordered this set. Good, 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 good. I, I actually found these in Florida when I visited my brother and I bought all I could bring back in my little suitcase. And after I read through it and I read a few of the pages and then offered it to you guys and you responded that way, I called him back and I said, you need to go buy everything they have and send it to me. <laughs> hey guy, look, guys, look, this is my um coffee mug. And this co coffee mug is a Magnolia coffee mug. It is from... um is her name from chip on joanna Gaines? yeah joanna Gaines is you know her store magnolia this um this mug is from them and to see bought this for me I, this is my second favorite mug my favorite is the compass mug but this is my i love to drink in this mug i don't know what it is about i will leave the five thousand mugs and go wash this one over and over and over do you have a favorite mug <clears throat> okay let me know. <laughs> I just want to know. You know, sometimes when I say let me know, I go back to look at the comments to see what your traditions are and stuff like that. And I realize some of you don't have any. And and girls, you've really got to start writing these things down and saying them. But here are a few thoughts that I had and then we'll unbox these shoes, okay? Um, Rachel said the compass mug is my favorite. Michelle said my handle is breaking off. That means you need a new one. 
Melanie said I'm late. You didn't miss anything, Melanie. We're just about to start. Ooh, shoes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, this morning while I was praying, mine is a Snow White mug that says, even in the morning, I'm the fairest one of all. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I like Snow White mugs. I like well, I like white mugs anyway. <laughs> I make my coffee look good. So these are I, I'm, I'm entitling them. I have a list, a running list right now called the ten most important lessons of 2020 that I've learned. And I don't know if you do this. I do this every year. And some some years it turns from ten lessons to about fifty lessons, <laughs> and um, but I try to make sure that the year doesn't go by without God revealing Himself in a greater way to me, or without me at least just getting to know Him better. And um, the one thing that He has asked me consistently during this year, and that I'm still answering, and I answered this morning, and I want to ask you that question and respond to me if you think about it, is um, have you? ever doubted that there is a God? And isn't that a really loaded question? And when I thought about it this morning and I heard him tell me, he said, did you ever doubt that I exist? And so I stopped for a minute and um, I had to really think back about it because I didn't want to just answer. I wanted to really give it an honest thought because you know what? God knows the truth. and Whatever he's asking me is not for information. It really is for me to, to search myself and see where my heart is as far as, as, um, you know, the questions that he's asking me and discovery goes. So have you ever doubted that God exists? So before I answer the question, would you like to answer? Would anybody like to answer and tell me, have you ever? Um, Clint says, I feel like I have in the past. Thank you for being honest about that. And, um, you know, a lot of people bump into that sometimes. God, are you not, not God, are you listening? Not God, um, did you hear? Or God, will you show up? But really God, is there a God? Not even God, are you there? But is there a God? And Lois said, I've never doubted that God exists. Thank you for sharing that as well, Lois. And, um, and so I went back in my life, even searching as far as, as when I was a child. I definitely have back when I was a baby Christian. I don't doubt, but I doubted heaven and hell before I was saved. And, and those things are such good. Um, June said, yes, I did. Rachel said, yes, I did. Um, you know, so, so when I was a teenager, so different ones of us at different season in our life, seasons in our lives may have had those times when we doubted that God exists. And today he asked me that. And, and I don't know if in your prayer time you give God moments to ask you questions. I do. I find that I discover more about myself when he asks the questions than when I ask of him. And, um, when he asked me that particular question, I had to search and I, 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 I came to the discovery that I never have doubted that he existed. Um, that's not kudos to, to me. It's so hard to admit, but in my darkest moments, I doubted God existed. And to this day, I sometimes feel so guilty because he has brought me through so much things. Kadisha, thank you for sharing that. And I don't say that as that isn't, uh, it's not good or, or bad, you know, um, if you've doubted he existed or not, because the doubt that he will answer is just to, to me as grave as to doubt that he exists. And, and I realize that I have, even though I have not doubted that he ever existed, I have doubted that he was listening for sure, for sure. I've had those moments when I thought, um, you know, you exist, I know, but do you care? Or do you really, are you really as invested in humanity as you say you are, or as I believe you are? And um, there have been moments when I have doubted that, that, um, or not even, I don't know if doubted is the real word. So this is what I came to in the conclusion. And I felt like the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, he said, I'm not okay with you doubting my existence, but I'm okay with you questioning me. And 
I love that answer because he is God and he understands our frame and he knows where we are in terms of our belief in him. And and he, let me tell you something, um, we know we talk a lot about blind faith and we talk a lot about just believing when you don't see, but God does not expect you to not question and understand. And it, it's like the guy who said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Remember that in the Bible? In other words, he's like, yes, I believe on some level, I believe, but you've got to help because there's still an unbelief in there that you need to help me with. And and honesty that you can have and the transparency that you can have before God, to me, it is the childlikeness that he loves most of all. Not this whole, I'm going to preach till I'm blue in the face. And if you don't believe like I believe, you're going to, you know, you're, you're not doing it right kind of nonsense. Because that kind of stuff leads to, not only does it lead to grave and and solid belief but it leads to the biggest falls when your foundations get shaken and so i heard him say you know and, and this is what i i came to the conclusion in my life that i have never doubted him but i've questioned him and i don't know if that's where some of you are today you don't doubt him but you have questioned and you know um you said lord why or how or i don't understand or this makes no sense and according to your word it's supposed to be but yet here it is and 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 to know that he is not angry with me when i question and to know that he is not put off by my doubt because because my questioning him is an affirmation that i know he is there if you think about about it when you question God and I do not question his motives and I do not question his wisdom I question the actions and I question the choices and I question the ways that he chooses to take me through things in 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 ways I might not have done them because one they might be too painful or two they might be beyond my understanding so um June says, boy, have I got a few questions. You're funny. Um, Tasha said, I have and I did. But some of the things I've been through showed that there's no room for doubt because he's real, more real than anything in my life and has always been there for me. Um, Yonette said, I'm questioning a lot in this season. He said, yes, I've questioned him now. Rose said, wait, we're allowed to question? I did not know this. <clears throat> And Rose, I, I'm glad that you said that because that, isn't that what we're taught though? We're taught that you can't question God. And people have even preached that Job never questioned God. And you got to listen to me and and see and, and search for yourself and, and understand him. Um, the, the people who were friends of God and the people who, who he had communion and and conversation and relationship with are always the ones who who could throw a question at him and the question is not an accusatory question it's not and i never ever question his heart and question that he is good or question that he is god or his sovereignty or his wisdom what I question are the ways that he's choosing to lead me or the things that he permits or the allowances or the future outcomes of the things that he has put in life. And, and I question what his direction is concerning COVID or, you know, question the way that that race issues go or politics go i question those things and i question why lord did you wait this long or why would you allow such and such to happen i do that all the time knowing that his ways are above my ways and his thoughts are above my thoughts you are allowed to question which parent um will will look at their child and when they say mom um why is this this way would say Sh shut up am i the mother or are you the mother is that a good mother is that a good father the one who shuts down every question that a child would ask the reason why a child asks is because that's formative that's the way they frame their their outlook on life and they frame their thought patterns and they frame their mindsets and and when the bible says train up a child in the way he should grow it's not talking about beating the child into submission it means answering the questions in ways that causes that child to think for themselves and formulate decisions and life patterns and thought process and and 
that's what questions and answers do you know some of us were really bad in school why because we were scared to ask questions we were scared to say i don't understand can you explain that to me and because you were afraid of repercussions from your teacher and you were put in a stage of submission you're afraid of getting beat or you're afraid of getting embarrassed or you're afraid of showing up as not being smart enough that you never put your hand up and you grew up without knowledge we treat God that way, but he is not that way. He's not that way. He said, come. He said, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And you know what's the next part he said? He said, and learn of me. How on earth are you going to learn of him if you never ask a question? He said, this is why. He says, because I am meek and I am humble. Oh my gosh. He said, I won't tell you who the heck do you think you are. He said, I'm gentler than you believe. I am more receptive. You know, you ever had to work with somebody who felt like they knew everything? And or you ever had to be in a class with a teacher who thought you were an idiot because you had a question or because you didn't understand the way that they were expressing themselves? You know how demeaning that makes you feel? God doesn't do that. His disciples were forever asking dotish questions. <laughs> or if you're not Trini, they were forever asking questions. Uh, Stephanie said, I will always ask because of the scripture, ask and it will be given. Um, and that question, the context of that question, the context of that scripture is not about questions and answers. It's really about provision, but it can be applied there. I, I, I mean, he said, you can ask me, but the disciples were like, Lord, what did you mean when you said, you know, or why is it that the Pharisees also were asking questions all the time? And, um, Jesus was kind of sarcastic a little bit in his, the way he answered the Pharisees. So that's the first thing I, I, I learned in 2020, that God is not put off by our questions. He's not upset by questions. It's doubt, right? OE of little faith, why do you doubt? The thing that bothered him wasn't the questioning, it was the doubting. Right. And that's why he said, if you're going to doubt that I exist, you know, there, there's a story. I can't remember his name off the bat, but there was this really the greatest missionary of the 1960s. Billy Graham once said that if he was, if this guy had stayed in Christ, he would have been the evangelist to the earth, not Billy Graham. And this guy made the mistake of going to a seminary where they didn't believe in the infallibility of the word of God. And he turned out to be um, first agnostic and then completely atheistic and then completely anti-scripture. That's why I tell people, be careful who educates you. Be careful that you don't go to seminary and become a backslider. I, and when people tell me they're going to go to Bible school, most of the times I discourage it because I'm like, I've seen it over and over and over and over again. 90% of the people who go to Bible school turn out to be unbelievers because they're being instructed by people who are not filled with the Holy Spirit. And the more you learn, the smarter you think you are, and you forget that God is still the ultimate wisdom. So I feel like his searching and the searching of his ways is always, he always prefers those who would come like a child instead of come like a boss. So that's one. The second thing is that a thumbs down is not God's disapproval. I, 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 um, I, I read, when I was reading the Facebook book, I don't know if you read it, but um, not just Zuckerberg, but the, all the guys who came up with Facebook. Do you know one of them said, he said his children are not allowed on Facebook and he will never allow them on Facebook. And he regrets that he was a part in the creation of a thing that would cause so many people to go into mental states of unrest and dis disability and depression by a thumbs down. And when it is so easy to feel rejected by the clicking of a button and somebody, and let me tell you, this is a real thing, you know, 150 people can give you a thumbs up, but you see that one thumbs down and immediately you focus on the one thumbs down. Why did they do that? What did they not like? Why are they so evil? Why is that? Because as humans, we're just drawn to that thumbs down where we don't want to be rejected and that thumbs down is a rejection. Well, the guy who, who helped invent this whole 
actual system said, he said, why did we even put the thumbs down? We should have said, if you like it, like it. If not, go your way. But so many people are going into depression. Do you know how many? You see them on on YouTube all the time. YouTubers who say, I had to take a break. I had to get off of, of social media because it was killing me. You know, because we we look at that. And again, I see it as a trick of the enemy. I see it as the devil's tool to cause people to be rejected. But do you know that God does not, never has rejected you? He said that you are fearfully, wonderfully made. We know the scripture, but we live in a generation where we do not believe that anymore because we we hang our hat of worth on the pole of people's acceptance. And we can't do that. We can't believe what people say and what people think of us and and we live our lives to conform to people's expectations do you know that's why everything the media says we're swallowing it we live in a world let me show you what how evil this has become there is an agenda and this was written in the 1980s in, in about the 1980s 1987 a communist agenda that's coming down the pikes right now and one of the things like number four or five on this communist agenda was to create a genderless society a, a society where people neither um, identify as male nor female in order to create a population that you can integrate you know robotics into and i know it sounds ridiculous but you need to really go back and read some governmental manifest and this is not the people who think they know like actors and idiots and i'm sorry i call them idiots but really the people who just swallow this stuff hook line and sinker the ones that we see on tv and the ones that are on the news and the ones who think they're enlightened those people are just pawns there are people above them on another level in the pyramid of the united states and the world government there are people who have really really big stakes in this thing and there was a systematic plan put in to place where one percent of the population would affect the entire billions of people on the earth and the way they would do that is to first confuse people about gender is that the most ridiculous thing this was before there was genderless expression this was before where you know it, it would start like this it would start first with confusing people about sexual orientation am i straight am i gay am i bi what am i what are these feelings I'm feeling? If I like pink as a boy, it probably means I'm not a girl. Am I even going into this right now? Yes, I am. And, and that's how it began. It didn't begin as generation nothing or as gender x it began as a confusion let me tell you something child of god and i will say it categorically write it down quote it and give me a thumbs down if you hate it but god is not the author of confusion and what they did was confuse kids they made kids ask a question that they were not confused about are you sure you are female are you sure you are male so before it was a confusion about sexual orientation to where we have girls women boys men christians now thinking that they're bisexual now thinking that they like the same sex that was never a question when they were children it was never a point but they, god will god I don't know. I, this is one of the questions I ask God. Why did you let them in? Because it takes one serpent. It takes one question. It takes one person with that kind of inclination to come and infiltrate like a poison and make everybody start questioning things you were not confused about. All of a sudden, everybody's confused about it. All of a sudden, you're questioning things. God is not the author of confusion. It was a diabolical and systematic agenda to cause one, sexual orientation confusion, two, gender confusion in the near future, right? To, to identify as male or female will be the uncool thing. You understand? To have gender fluidity will be cooler. Just like we saw it happen in society where in order to be a fashion designer, in order to be a makeup artist, in order to be a hairstylist, you had to be gay or it, it's your better you know, and you can you can not like me for what I'm saying right now, but you know it's the truth. Why did the whole world swallow that lie? Why? 
because we were programmed that way. Television programs us this way that you have to, you have to conform to this. And they make Christianity sound like confirmation. They make it sound like if you are a Christian, then you are brainwashed. When the fact of the matter is to be a Christian in this society requires more rebellion than anything else. The guy with the tattoos all over his face, he's not rebellious. I am rebellious. To stand up for Jesus in a society that says God is not real, it takes the most guts in the whole world. To stand up for life when standing up for abortion is more popular, it takes guts. I'm reading some of your comments right now because I I wanna I wanna I wanna hear you. You know, this is one thing that that 2020 has made so clear to me that the collective consciousness of the people is so sad. We live in a world where people will believe everything they're fed. And they will not listen to the voice of God. And that I feel like if I understand what John the Baptist said, he said, look, I'm just one screaming in the wilderness, but there's nobody to hear me prepare the way of the Lord. Child of God, thumbs down is not God's disapproval. Thumbs down is just some human with an opinion. Do not allow what people say and what people do to dictate your day, your psychology, your heart, your mind, your spirit, your expression of self, your desire. Honey, if you feel a way about the Lord, you say so. You say so boldly. You get up and be full of who you are in Christ and don't allow yourself to be sucked in to the intimidation of a society that wants you to conform to their confusion. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Confusion about gender is a plan. Gender X is not a thing. It is not a thing. And point zero point two eight of the population of the earth does not dictate how the earth goes. And do you know what would happen if people woke up? If people really open their eyes to this garbage, then it wouldn't win. And it wouldn't dictate our lives. And it wouldn't affect our children. And it wouldn't creep into the church. And it wouldn't become the norm of society. And the last thing. I realized in 2020 that people are excited to abandon what's right for what's popular. You know what God said? He said, I put in every man. This is so good. He said, I put in every human being a knowledge of God and of what is right. No man will be able to stand before God without ex with, with, with excuse. He said, you can't say you didn't know me because inside of you, I read this in the book of Romans the other day while I was preaching. He said, I put inside of you a knowledge of me apart from the intrinsic evidence in everything that we see. He said, you know me. And if you would be true to yourself, you'd realize that you know me. But I realize it is more exciting in this world for men to abandon what is right for what is popular. And if we would become the kind of people who would say, you know what? And right, I don't even mean, listen to me. And you need to listen to me clearly. I don't even mean right by what I say. Honestly, I don't even mean right by what the Bible says. I know that's our benchmark, and I know the word of, I need you to understand this. 
I know that that's what the rule we live by because you know why? I choose that. Not because that's imposed on me. I pick that. Not because some government told me to do it. No, I pick God. I choose God. I choose Jesus. He is God and I choose him. I mean, if we would just do what is right by what God put inside of us as humans, you know, the day that that, that little ovum beat the odds to be fertilized by a little sperm that beat the odds to become you, when God so divinely, intricately wove you to be who you are, he, he created you with, with the, the, the instinct of correctness. He really did. So that if you knew, if you knew as a human being, which is the, the only creature that God created with that ability to, to go through its thoughts and pick the right thing, and we wouldn't be a confused population of people. We wouldn't be, you know, when big, big men and women get confused, what do we leave for the children? Yeah, seriously. When people like, like, what's his name? The Kardashian's dad. You know, a man who would win an Olympic race, decide after all he was a woman in the first, what do we leave for children? You know, what do you leave but confusion? Anyway, those are the three, well, I think three or four three of the many things 2020 has taught me. Not to, why am I brandishing a knife? I'm about to cut the box of shoes open. <laughs> um, those are the things, some of the things that 2020 has taught me. Before the year's over, I'll share more of them with you. There, this year has been the most teaching year. And if you've learned nothing coming out of this year, I would, I would, I would say it's time to start evaluating what God has taught you and write it down. Let's talk about it. I would love to hear the things that God has taught you. <laughs> Vicky Michelle, that knife. <laughs> it's just a knife. It's just a steak knife. Okay. You ready to see what's in the box? Do you want to see? Okay. So these shoes, um, I have... And, and this auction will be doing. I don't know if I'll do it this year because I know it's already been financially strenuous on you guys. Um, but I will do it very, very soon, okay? I have um, the shoes that we, we got are all, every single one, um, either Louboutins or Louis Vuittons or they're very expensive shoes. Every single pair, over $1,000 retail. And I have size seven, seven and a half, six, six and a half. Um, we also have some really designer purses. I don't even know. I didn't ask for it. I didn't, I, I don't, seriously, I, I think that sometimes our $6 stuff look, stuff looks just as good as our $6,000 stuff. Um, but I just want to thank Abba for just doing something like this, for even blessing somebody enough so that they would bless us. And, and, um, and I thought about it. I was like, well, let me just give the shoes away and, and bless people like that. And then I thought, you know what? Maybe I could auction it off and use the money to bless others and bless even more people than one person just enjoying it, right? You have slippers? June, look at my slippers. Are these the cutest? These are cute. Look, and they match my Christmas, Christmas long johns. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, Melanie said this video literally set me free. Thank you for saying that. Okay, so I'm going to try to bend this down to the box over here. Okay, you can see it. All right, this is my cozy coming. Hey, guys, if you want to order anything from the um from the blacksmith and shepherd store, like the candles or anything or the pens or anything this is the last week you can order i'm not making anything after this week okay i'm just letting you guys know that all right so i'm gonna open the box and then i'm gonna show you each i don't know what it looks like yet obviously i feel like i need some christmas music in the background i know michelle solomon is salivating <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna try to, hi to hide the name and my address 
Did you see it? Because I know this rapper got shot when he put his address on YouTube. I don't think any of you will shoot me, but you know, if people don't like what I said today, they might come after my puppy. I will be so mad if they come after my puppy. Okay, hold on. I'm just trying to hide addresses right now. And my donor will be very glad that I did that. Ugh. Hey guys, will you in the comments write why, um, will you write what you learned? Not now, but think about it. Don't just write garbage. Garbage. Will you write what you learned? Oops, did you see the address? Uh, 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 uh. Tell me, okay? I'll go back and edit it. All right, yeah. Huh, that was a task. All right. Okay. Okay, so this one's Christian Lubuta. I guarantee you, this girl don't buy no fake stuff. I'm, I've gone shopping with her, okay? You ready, girls? This one is gonna be your so much. Oh, it's so tiny. My foot can't fit in this. Okay, so this is going to be your spring summer shoe. So I won't put this on auction until next year. Okay, guys, you're going to get them for next to nothing. Next to nothing. You're going to love. So that's one. Next set is. Also, oh my gosh. Okay, these are Louboutins also. <gasps> Look, I don't even have any um, sparklies in my room. Look at the way this thing is glistening. What? It's so shy. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I, get, I get a little mm, wet of glitter. Okay. The next one. I'm gonna take them out of the baggies. Christian Louboutin. I love shiny too. This one has the chunky heel. It's so gonna be it. But look at the height of these things. Oh my gosh. Do you see this? This is a 38. Oh my gosh, this has been worn once, once, just once. Guys, I dare you to go look them up right now. They're still available, most of them for sale in the Louboutin store. Um, um, let's... Everything here is Louboutin. <laughs> Finally, a shoe with a heel that the average woman could... Is this gorgeous? Man, I'm gonna put my foot in this. Let me see if it can fit me. Mm, yeah. Yes, yes. Look, Ruthie's like, mine, mine. Ruthie, you're in for a hole right now. I feel like um, Cinderella's stepsister right now, trying to squeeze my big old foot into this shoe. Ta -da! <laughs> it doesn't fit. <laughs> but it's gorgeous. Wow. I think this one is a six and a half. Okay, let's keep looking. Another Louboutin. Can you guys believe I have a friend that would do that? Forget about it. These are super, super popular Louboutins. This thing, if I could, if you had a weight division, this thing is like, I would say 
six ounces. It is so light, so light. More, more, more. What? What? Summer. Also Louboutins. Okay. More. I think these are my favorites. I could preach a sermon in that. Okay. For the girls who don't like shoes, you're like, yawn. But for the girls who like shoes, they're like, <gasps> More Louboutins. They're all Louboutins. She's a Louboutin fan. Oh, man. And look, not that high. Perfect nude. What do you call these again? With the straps? What do you call them? Um, not a pump. It's a, not a slide. It's a, remind me, a slingback. Ta-da. Look at it up close. Guys, go check this one on the site. I saw it just the other day. Go check it out. Check it out. It's super expensive. Super expensive. Don't worry. For those of us who don't like high heels, we're also doing some designer bags. These are... Um, she, uh, they're the, the Giuseppe, blah, blah, blahs. Andira, one of you will have to pronounce it for me. And these are also, you go look them up. How cute is that? These are also designer and super expensive. Um, Shiki, are you seeing this? Are you looking at this right now? Look at that. Look at that. Okay, more. Hold on. These ones, also the Giuseppe's. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me. You could kick the devil with this shoe. You could like literally kick the devil with this. Unlock him up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. <laughs> it's so cute. All right, one more pair. Um, while for some reason, this is so channeling you. Yeah, these are Louis Vuittons. Sweet Lord. Wow. Wow. I wish they would fit me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I want to show you guys the other couple um, I have upstairs, but I forget. Plus, there are some in my closet that I'm going to put in the auction as well. Um, yeah, I have some really beautiful brand name shoes, too, that I want to put in the auction. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. You guys have to help me figure this out. I'm going to probably auction some to you guys and then put some on Facebook Marketplace or maybe like on... Um, the real real or something like that and cheryl's like dibs on the handbags <laughs> yeah we have some um louis vuitton handbags and um at least one valentino that i'm gonna be auctioning off so <laughs> um i love you guys thank you so much for joining me i hope you had a good time i know it was a little bit off the cuff and a little bit different but um i like chat chatting with you guys and today like i said i'm just gonna chill at home i'm gonna go put this knife back and um, finish my coffee and then go upstairs and try to clean my living room maybe perhaps um and, and also do some studying 
I, I um, do look forward to hearing what 2020 taught you. Colleen said I need a steak for this knife. I can probably hook myself up with one of those. <laughs> Have a great, great evening and morning, rest of your morning. And I will talk to you guys again. I think I might be praying tonight at 7 o'clock. I'm not sure. Bye. I love you guys too.